What it do? Welcome to another new episode of Locked on Bucks. On today's show, the Bucks winning streak is up to five now after beating the San Antonio Spurs at home 132 to 119. Damian Lillard had 40 points a season high, while Giannis had a triple-double and Bobby Portis came through with a big double-double, 23 points, 10 rebounds. Want to talk about the Bucks' front court a bit and show them some love. And in addition to that, Malik Beasley returned after missing the weekend slate of games after an illness. And we saw a particular young buck lose some minutes in Beasley's return. Should we be surprised about any of that? All that and more coming up next. You are Locked On Bucks, your daily Milwaukee Bucks podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Bucks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Camille Davis. You can catch me on the Technical File Podcast, as well as Cheesehead TV's Carry the G and MKE. Joining me is longtime voice of the pod and founder of BrewHoop.com, Frank Madden. We appreciate you for tuning in, and thank you for making Locked On Bucks your first listen every single day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, and you can also catch us on YouTube as well. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NBA for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Damian Lillard, we got to start there tonight, Frank. He dropped a pretty efficient forty ball tonight. He was seven of ten from two point range, and he was seven of twelve from three point range, making him good for fourteen of twenty two on the evening. It was his first forty point game as a Buck. And this performance comes off of him dropping 39 against Houston and then 33 against Detroit, meaning that this is the third straight game that we saw Dame time get to business and score at least 30 points. He's averaging 28 a game in December now, splits 49% overall, 46.6 from three, 91% from the foul line. Free throw attempts have gone down, um, and uh, that's okay because he's just uh, having these games where he's shooting the lights out and – you know, we had that long stretch where Giannis was going for 30 points on 60% shooting every night. Three straight games where he's been pretty subdued relative to what we had gotten used to post the 64-point game. And probably no more subdued than we saw tonight where the pop basically said, like, I'm just going to double you and wall up the paint on Giannis. And so he kind of went into, uh, you know, what Kane and I used to call kind of triple-double hunting mode um, very early in this game. And uh, I think he just sort of decided, you know, I'm just going to take what the defense is giving me and become more of a playmaker. And I think he took two shots in the second half, Camille. And I think there were both three pointers that he missed. He made one out of two free throws. That was his only point in the second half, but he had ten ass- or nine assists in the second half alone. And so, um, you know, again, I think uh, just, oh, no, he, he, excuse me. He did have 10 assists because he had 16 total. He had six at halftime, um, 10 points, nine boards, six assists in the first half. Uh, 1.5 rebounds and 10 assists in the second half, which is a stat line. I don't know if we'll ever say that stat line for Giannis uh, again in a half. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, again, you just kind of look at the numbers. Um, one, what would they put up? 132 tonight. We even saw mm-hmm. a Robin Lopez three-pointer, which I I welcome with open arms. Some tea time. The flourish, tea time. Um, it's been too long. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, Dame's been on a heater now. And lo and behold, he's at 62% true shooting, over 26 points a game. All is well with Damian Lillard. And, um, you know, I think, again, the Bucks are getting closer and closer if, if they're not already sort of at kind of fully operational, you know, Death Star status offensively. Uh, they're getting pretty close between what we've seen from Giannis early in the season and Dame now mm-hmm. also getting to a, a much higher level consistently. And, and Chris Middleton as well now getting – you know, that more consistent minutes load and he played 28 minutes tonight, but we've seen him up over 30 and, you know, they really didn't need to stretch him right. too far tonight, even though those pesky spurs, it was uh kind of, you know, it was still a bit of a classic play with your food bucks night. They go up 21 to three. So it never felt like this game was close, but you know, the spurs did cut in that lead pretty significantly. And by early in the third, I think, was it, was it an eight point game? I think down to eight quarter. Yep. Yeah. I mean, he never, Felt like the Spurs were going to win this game, but especially without with with Victor Wembanyama, unfortunately sitting it out with an ankle injury. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it kind of you know I don't know I don't know what to make of this. I think if you bought tickets hoping to see Victor and Giannis do battle, I'm sure you're disappointed. You had tickets right to this game originally, and I'm guessing you yeah. sold your tickets, so you you can speak to that, right? 
Absolutely. Yeah, my husband still went. He went with a friend because I was here for the Wimby Giannis matchup, but it looks like I missed out on a Dame heater. You mentioned already how this man has been cooking up in the month of December. And I mean, coming into the game in itself, he only needed six points to hit 20,000 career points. And he crossed that milestone very quickly in the first quarter. He had 19 in the first quarter alone. This comes off of having 15 in each of the last two games in that first quarter prior to this one as well. And Dame is really cooking. And with the Bucks being able to get off to this fast start with Dame leading the way over the last few, I mean, one thing that we saw from this team early on in the season was that they got off to really slow starts. And that was not the case today. It hasn't been the case throughout this homestand. For the Bucks. they had 44 points in the first quarter tonight, um, a season high for them. And I mentioned it like this has been a historic streak as well for the Bucks. Like it seems like every other game or so since they've been back home after that loss to the Pacers in Vegas, some kind of milestone <laughs> is happening. Like we had Giannis getting the franchise record in points against the Pacers when he dropped 64. Same game. Day moved up to fifth all time and made threes for career. Then against the Rockets, Giannis broke the franchise record for rebounds all time. And then tonight against the Spurs, as mentioned, Dane moved over that $20,000 or 20,000 uh, career point mark for his career, which made him the 51st player in NBA history to do it. It's, they're just rolling right now offensively. Some might point to who they're playing against, but my argument to that is always, well, if they're playing against poor competition, what you want to see is this team really putting, the, you know, putting the pedal to the metal winning by double digits, and we saw that again tonight against the Spurs. Yeah, I mean, the Sixers and, and Bucks have had, like, the two weakest schedules in the league. Yeah. I think so far, Bucks have had the easiest schedule in the league. Sixers have had the second easiest. They've just been annihilating bad teams of late. So, you know, of course, would I rather that the Bucks win by 40 every night and you know, Giannis and Dame don't have to play in the fourth quarter? Like, that'd be nice. Um but here's the irony, right? The Sixers are the toast of the league. Look how look how nicely things have worked out for the Sixers. And the Bucks are like everybody's like, ah, the Bucks, you know, uh, and, you know, we've been I've I've been part of that because I think there's some valid reasons to, you know, feel less than impressed all the time right. with the way that they've played. But they've gotten on a roll, and yes, they've been obviously beating up on a lot of bad teams. But the Rockets game was was a good win. The Pacers game was a good win, um, and. You know, they're 20 and seven, right? 20 and seven, I think right now. Yep. We're basically at the one third point of the season. And I was looking back at kind of previous years and for all the kind of concerns that we may still have moving forward about this team, especially on the defensive end. And, you know, do they have answers, you know, come April, May and June? Um, it's not to say that those things get wiped away, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things, again, while you're still figuring things out to be banking wins the way that they've been doing it. They're second in the East. The Sixers are not second in the East. Uh, so we'll see if it lasts, but um, at least for now, the Bucks are at 20 and seven, the same record that they had last year, uh, 27 games into the season when they won 58. Basically you're at 60 win pace. If you just kind of do the math here, again, the point differential is not the point differential of a 60 win team at this point. Um, but I think we at least have reason to believe that, you know, this isn't the even the best of what we should expect from the Bucks. And, Kind of if they ever started to like try hard getting back on defense and you know began to I don't know like tonight right like defensively the defensive numbers actually weren't bad 110 defensive rating that's actually what they had last year but um, so it was a fast paced game that kind of mim I think kind of um, glossed over maybe just the, the fact that the offenses weren't actually that good tonight Bucks mm -hmm. were still over 120 offensive rating so they were very good but um, but again it's like you know where the Bucks. The Bucks look like a team that knew they were going to win after the first quarter and probably, you know, mailed in uh, a fair number of defensive possessions. Yeah. You know, so are we going to lose sleep over that? No. But again, it's all going to come down to when they have to play like real teams. And I think certainly Thursday's test is going to be a very legitimate one against a frisky magic team that you've already lost two once. And then you have to go to New York for back to back games against a team that you've beaten a couple of times already. Um, and uh, you're going to see if you can do it again on their floor and with the Knicks. So, um, you know, again, to be at 20 and, 20 and 7 with all the kind of, I hate to say, I hesitate to say turmoil, but with all the kind of noise and the continuation. You know, yeah. And, and just not just that, but I mean, like, clearly, like, there's been, you know, some friction and like some frustration early in the season. So to kind of get through that and, you know, we'll see what happens when the schedule gets a little harder here the rest of December. But, 
you've at least positioned yourself where, you know, you're not like seventh or something like that. Um, which, you know, you look at some teams like Phoenix, they've had a bunch of injuries, Mm -hmm. but you know, the Suns I think are an interesting comp given that they're also a team that you expect is going to score a ton of points defenses where they have some question marks. Um, and they're like 10th in the West right now, given all the injuries that they've had. So to be knock on wood, relatively healthy and to be at 20 and seven at this point, um, I think the only year during the butt era when they had a better record than 20 and seven, which is what they had last year was in 1920 when they were 24 and three to start the year. And every time I look at these sorts of numbers, it just reminds me how incredible that 1920 team was and how sad it is that everything got disrupted by the pandemic because mm-hmm. again, that team was 52 and eight when Giannis yeah. got hurt towards Zerk right before the, the play stoppage. So that team was a, a regular season juggernaut, but as we saw that year, you never know how this stuff's going to translate to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Um, so again, you know, we can say the season just started, but we're already a third way through Camille. I don't right. know. I mean, it's, it's kind of, kind of flown by. And, um, you know, I think if you told me coming into the year, like you could, would you take 20 and seven in the first 27 games? I would have said, hell yes, give me that. And I'll yeah. worry about, you know, the circumstances later. So again, glass half full, I think it's a positive that they are where they are. Um, but again, you still have two thirds of the season to figure some things out and certainly we'll continue harping on the defense, but, um, obviously, um, we'll kind of see what happens. Hopefully the, the health continues to improve with Pat back now and hopefully Jay Crowder, obviously still a ways out, but, um, Mm -hmm. inching closer to a return as well. Yeah. The Bucks are one of three teams in the league right now with 20 wins. As you mentioned, they're second in the East. They're behind the Celtics who are 20 and five. Then the Western Conference, you have the Timberwolves, who are also 20 and 5. So the Bucks are doing all right uh, while they're rounding into form here. And you mentioned how they've been looking after some early turmoil with the team. And I want to take a look into that, in particular with the Bucks' bigs, especially Bobby, um, because he had the comments after that Pacers L in Vegas, and he was challenging the team. And he's someone who has stepped up to the challenge. And I want to look deeper into that right after this. Our partners at eBay Motors have teamed up with Locked On Fantasy host Josh Lloyd to bring you some of the best fantasy picks each week all season long. So whether you're prepping for a daily draft or scouting the waiver wire, shoot, even if you're thinking about some daily fantasy options, you might want to take a look at some of these guys here. And every week, we're going to make sure that we provide you with players that are guaranteed to fit on your roster. So let's take a quick look at one of the players that Josh has picked out for us on this week's eBay Guaranteed Fit Fantasy Picks of the Week. Let's talk about a guy from a team that we just got done talking about, the Phoenix Suns, as well as somebody who Bucks fans are pretty familiar with, and that happens to be Grayson Allen. With Bradley Bill being out, the Phoenix Suns Big Three has only played, let's say, a game and a half together at this point, and Bill is out again for a couple of weeks. So Grayson Allen is somebody who should see some really strong minutes and a nice increased usage role over the next few weeks while Bradley Bill continues to heal up. Josh Lloyd from Locked On Fantasy Basketball is going to help you win your fantasy championship. And eBay Motors knows the championship team is all about each player being a perfect fit, playing their roles right. And that's the exact same for your vehicle. With over 122 parts for your car, you can make sure that your ride stays running smoothly. Whether you need some new brake kits, some LED headlights, a roof rack, bumpers, whatever it is that your car or vehicle might need, eBay Motors has it. And with the eBay Guaranteed Fit, It's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. So you don't have anything to lose. If it doesn't work out, you get your money back when they guarantee it to fit. Plus, at the prices that eBay is charging, listen, you're going to be burning rubber and not cash, which is especially important during this holiday season. So make sure you keep your ride alive at ebaymotors.com. eBay guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, and exclusions do apply. We appreciate you tuning in to Locked on Bucks. A special shout out to the everydayers who tune in Monday through Friday. We appreciate it. If you enjoy what we do here on Locked on Bucks, I got to put you up on something else that I think that you might enjoy, which is Locked on Sports today. Locked on has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked on Sports today is here for you with 24-7 coverage of the top sports stories of the day. Is brought to you by all the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows that cover every league. So make sure you head over to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever 
national sports 24 seven streaming channel. Now, as I mentioned, we've talked about Dame, talked about Giannis. And I want to spend some time talking a bit about what we've seen from the Bucks bigs. Brooke Lopez, five blocks against Detroit. He had six blocks tonight against the Spurs. His three-point percentage in the month of December has been a little bit down from what we've seen so far this season, shooting around 30%. But Brooke's been able to make a pretty big impact defensively. And then Bobby Portis, who I mentioned already. We know that that was the voice in the locker room after the Bucks lost to the Pacers in Vegas, who called out his teammates, who called out his coaching staff, saying we need to execute better, need to be better organized, we have to play better. And Bobby is somebody who stepped up to that challenge because in that game against the Pacers, wasn't the best game from Bobby Portis. But since then, we've had five games. We're on the fifth game of this homestand. And he had a career high uh, with the Bucks against Detroit with 31 points. He had 12 rebounds that night as well. He now, with this double-double, has passed Kevin McHale. And he sits fourth all-time in double-doubles off the bench with 62 of those. And since that uh, tournament loss to the Pacers in Vegas, Bobby's been averaging a little bit over 20 points, seven rebounds, and an assist, which is over his last five games. Bobby is somebody who has definitely stepped up to that challenge that he issued to everyone in that locker room. And he started with himself, it seems like. Yeah, and I think the you know the question for Bobby, I mean, this is why Bobby is such a useful regular season player, right? Because like you kind of know that like on these random days when – you're worried about like, is the team going to get up for, you know, a crappy Spurs team that <laughs> that's lost a ton of games lately and doesn't have Victor Wembanyama and, you know, are they going to kind of half-ass, let's say uh, a game like this on a Tuesday night? Bobby's not going to half-ass a game. Nope. Big Bob's going to be on the ass. Uh, <laughs> did I get that right? You got it uh, right. Yeah. Um, he even tweeted it out. I forget. Where did, do, do you remember who said that first? James I, said it first it in the game? Instagram story, just big Bob on the ass. And after, after that, it's just become law for Bucks fans to say that after a good Bobby game. So, uh, you know, it's going to be right up there with the great Bucks call, catchphrases, fear the deer, light it up, light it up and big Bob on the ass. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, I mean, I mean, credit to him, right? I mean, the three point shooting, I was kind of looking at it, right. I mean, you probably remember early in the season, Felt like he couldn't buy a three in the first two mm -hmm. weeks of the year. He was up 35% coming into this game. He hits three out of six tonight, 23 points in, you know, not many minutes. Basically, he seems like he's taking all of Giannis's scoring uh, energy or something like that, right? I think he's been outscoring Giannis over these last couple of games um, on average, just with uh, kind of the heater that Bobby's been on. So, um, so yeah, I mean, credit to him for, again, backing it up and, you know, playing at the level that, Again, that's that's what he does. Like when other guys maybe don't have it on a regular season night, Bobby just he brings it, he brings it. And so now I think the question is, you know, especially as we look at some of these more difficult games coming up, what's he got, right? And so it's great that you know you show up and and you're able to bring it and bring the energy and get the crowd out of its seats, you know, on these random nights when maybe the energy isn't there. Um, but let's let's hope he can continue doing this against. Magic team that's got a lot of talent on their front line and has one of the best defenses in the league. Let's see if he can do it against, you know, the Knicks, um, his former team uh, mm -hmm. in the couple of games leading up to Christmas. So, um, I mean, I think that's ultimately like the gauge for Bobby is can he do this, you know, when the lights are shining brightest in the playoffs, um, you know, in these kind of marquee matchups. And yes, I will acknowledge Bobby hit two big shots in the fourth quarter, game six of the NBA finals. He made big plays in the first half of game five of the NBA finals and they came back from a huge deficit to win. So again, he's not big. I don't know if we can call him big shot, Bob. Um, I'm but, not sure about that. One uh, yet. But Bob has hit some big shots. Uh, and I think the question is, you know, okay, we just need to see it more consistently. And, um, you know, I think if people felt like you could count on Bobby to have a big series against the Boston Celtics or whatever, Yep. Um, or pick your other kind of top team, then I don't think you'd hear people talk about, you know, like, well, maybe we should think about what Bobby could get us in a trade or maybe Bobby's, you know, the matching salary in a deal for, you know, a wing defender or whatever it might be. So that's my little, uh, you know, motivation for Bobby Portis as if he needed any more um, is, uh, you know, prove those of us who kind of get that wandering eye, like, <laughs> don't worry about it, man. It's, I'm the mayor of Milwaukee. You can't trade the mayor. Hey, that's what I'm saying. But we didn't even speak about Giannis here. And before we wrap up here in this segment. By the way, did you like the Sohan? Did you like his little Jeremy Sohan uh, lockup? That Your was little lockup? Like Bobby he was proving just, a point? Yeah, exactly. That was uh, 
that was just funny. That was like I don't I don't even know how to describe that. It was like two uh, bighorn sheep or something, or that like lock horns and then just kind of like are stuck and just like don't move. It was just a very amusing little double tech that we saw there in the second half. It had some like big cousin energy to me as well, where you're just like like you're fighting and then your mom's coming in like you stop and you're like well, he started it and you're like no he started it and you're just both kind of like you figure it out. <laughs> But so um, has a British accent. So, I mean, I, you know, Bobby's got a, I feel like Bobby's five times more likely to, to fight you if, uh, if you've got a British accent. So sorry, <laughs> sorry, Jeremy, you seem like a good, a good dude, but no, just giving some love to Giannis as well. As we mentioned, a triple double tonight, his second of the season, he had 11 points, 14 rebounds, 16 assists. The 16 assists is a career high for Giannis. He had 15, ironically enough against the Spurs two years ago. And then he also had 15 against Portland back in 2019. Giannis was also the Eastern Conference Player of the Week. Ironically enough, it was the first time this season that happened when he definitely had a case some earlier weeks, 22nd of his career. But at least he got some love after dropping that 64 piece and just completely balling out. And like you mentioned tonight, didn't put up too many points, but he was able to just take what the game gave him and be a facilitator for everyone else around him. Yeah, and... uh... Again, like these these sorts of games are weird. Um, it is always interesting though when when teams just kind of like really decide that they don't want to let Giannis beat them, and like you do kind of sit back and just say like, so like why don't I mean it, it is interesting that like more teams don't try to do this, and I think the short answer is some of them do, and they still can't stop Giannis. So I mean the Spurs are a mess, but give them some credit. Like I think they actually had pretty good discipline, and at least in so far as walling up on Giannis and sending the extra man. And look, even if, you know, you're a great shooter, if you're getting doubled as much as Giannis was, it's going to be hard to score a lot. Um, And, you know, obviously Giannis is not a great shooter. So this also sort of underscored, you know, uh, why it's, why it'd be nice if he had a little bit more of that in between game, which, you know, missed two threes, missed a mid ranger tonight. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, obviously it was just kind of limited in, in how much he was able to do from a scoring perspective. So again, it is what it is kind of a off color few games really for him offensively in terms of from a scoring perspective, but um, you know, a good reminder of what he can do playmaking wise. Although the, the, the one pass that I thought that was maybe most memorable was the one where he threw a left-handed kind of like overhead whip pass across court. And it was like about four feet, uh, to the right. I don't know if it was Malik Beasley or who was in the corner, but I think it was bees. It was thrown so hard that like, there was no chance for the guy to go over and get it and credit to the Spurs assistant. I don't know who it was, but he just uh, hung in there and caught that, that fastball from Giannis for, for a turnover. But uh, I think he, I think Giannis only had three turnovers and the last one was like just blatantly assist hunting, trying to throw Brooke a lob mm-hmm. when he was like double team. So, uh, but even so, with all the pressure and double teaming Giannis three turnovers for 16 assists. Um, you know, again, I won't complain, complain too much uh, about the result tonight. Uh, although, you know, I, I, I do want to see him drop a, a 40 burger on the magic, on the first <laughs> day, especially because I might go to that game. Well, Hey, maybe, maybe if you speak it into existence, you know, we can, we can manifest that already happening. Uh, we've had some discussions as recently as the last post game show that we did just about what this wing rotation might look like. And we knew that Malik Beasley was going to be returning back soon to this team and wonder has Andre Jackson jr. Done enough to earn consistent minutes in the rotation tonight. He played a meaningful 15 minutes at the expense of another young buck. So I want to take a closer look at tonight's rotation and get your opinion on if there's any changes that you would suggest right after this. We're in the thick of the holiday season, and if you're struggling to find the perfect gift to give to a loved one, why not think about gifting an experience? Because, listen, tickets to a Bucks game, always a great gift, even on a night like tonight where there's no Victor Wimbenyama. Wasn't too hard for my husband to find someone to go to the game with him. It's, It's an experience. And if you use the Game Time app, it's the best way to find the best deals on the best seats for all of the hottest events in the city near you. Game Time is fast and easy. You can buy tickets for sports, music, comedy shows, theater events, whatever is happening near you. And Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. With Game Time, you can see the view from your seat before you buy it, so you always know exactly what to expect when you arrive. 
The all-in prices show your total up front, so you don't have to worry about any hidden fees or anything popping up at the end. What you see is what you'll pay. And plus, you can buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. Take all of the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Make sure you download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NBA for twenty bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code L O C K E D O N N B A for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. The Young Wings. It's been a, a hot topic of discussion, not even just among us, but Bucks fans in general. Tonight, with Malik Beasley returning to the lineup, Bees had 28 minutes as well as Chris Middleton. Pat Connaughton logged in 18 minutes. As I mentioned, Andre Jackson Jr. had 15 minutes. Marjan, though, only logged six minutes tonight, and two of those minutes were in garbage time. I just wanted to know, Frank, did this rotation surprise you, and are there any tweaks that you would make in the average minute allocation with this ring rotation going forward? I mean, I think – Andre's earned the minutes over Marjan at this point. Like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, Marjan has, has generally shot the ball pretty well this year, but I don't know. I mean, I, I don't, just like when I watch him, like, I don't feel like he's, I don't know, differentiated as a defender. Like he has the tools to be a good defender, but is he actually playing like good defense? I, I don't know. I, I don't think he's as good a defender as Andre. Andre is a better ball handler, p- playmaker. I think generally a higher IQ player. And so I, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like with Marjan, I'm, this, he's been fine. You know, I don't, mm-hmm. I don't feel like it's been, I think he's been better than he was last year, but kind of what we talked about, you know, and I talked about with Justin as well. Like, you know, I think we all hope that Marjan was the guy that would yep. make a big step in training camp and sort of force Adrian Griffin to have to play him more minutes and make a run at, you know, the starting spot, given that we all felt like, Hey, there's a need for a more defensive oriented, shooting guard starting as the kind of fifth starter. And it's kind of just has, I don't know. It's like, it's sort of happened. Like, you know, I think there's, I'm sure there's some people who would look at what Marjan's on. And some people are, would take like very, I, I feel like when I, when I talk about Marjan on, on Twitter, like sometimes I'll have like, you know, one person be like, you know, he's been disappointing and the other people be like, he's been really good. And it's just kind of like, yeah, I mean, he's just sort of like been out there. He's made some shots. He's done some good things. He's been invisible at times. Um, but I, I do think Andre's, better has been better um and again this is a lot of its kind of eye test because certainly the the metrics in terms of on off stuff doesn't support it and even when andre has played with Giannis and dame like they've been like a break-even team with a really bad defense and a lot of that is i was looking at some of the underlying data they've had really bad three-point shooting luck when he's been on the floor so i think a lot of you know some of the on off metrics not looking good for him are, are kind of maybe buried in that but you know we'll see i mean hopefully if he gets more run with kind of these, you know, the good players, which I think you have to, that's, these are the guys you have to play them with. Right. Right. You know, it's kind of, we saw in summer league, like, I mean, his numbers stunk and they were bad in part because it's like, Andre's not a guy that you feature, right. He's not just going to be able to put up, you know, 15 shots and score points just because there aren't other people around. Like he he just doesn't have that type of game. Um, So I think it's, it's been encouraging what we've seen so far. And, you know, I mean, he hit two more threes tonight. He's 11 of 23 on threes. I think he was 25 of 98 all of last year in college in like a thousand minutes from three point range. Um, he was a pretty bad two point shooter in college and he's been like, you know, he doesn't shoot much, but he just kind of makes everything because he's generally only taking dunks and layups. Um, so yeah, he's, I mean, I think he's, he's a guy that is a hundred percent played within himself um, and credit, credit to him for that. He shot his first free throws of the year tonight. Camille was one out of two first time he's got to the foul line, which, isn't surprising when you consider how much he passes out of like even layup attempts. But, um, but yeah, I think again, he's just a guy that I think at least has, I think you can at least see a world where he could be a really valuable wing defender and kind of glue guy on both ends, kind of connector type guy. And so, yeah, I think you just sort of, the extent you can continue to manufacture minutes and opportunities for him, you know, the fact that Jay's been out and you've been able to give kind of some of these other guys a little bit more run, I think, to me is, you know, again, not that you want Jay hurt or anybody hurt, but it's a little bit of a silver lining blessing in disguise that you at least get to figure out what you have with these guys, give them some more regular run. Um, Because again, we know what Jay is, you know, we know what Malik Beasley is. 
Um, and it's not to take anything away from those guys, but again, like in my closing games in the finals with Malik Beasley or Jay Crowder, I don't feel great about that. Like I kind of want to see what's behind door number two. And, uh, I mean, it's, it's a really tall order to say like, Oh, Andre Jackson, like he's going to be the guy. He's the answer. He's going to solve, solve all our problems as a rookie, you know, second round pick like that's, uh, that's expecting a lot. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure it's fair to even expect that, but again, maybe this year it's more about just giving them opportunities, seeing how far you can stretch him. And again, I, I don't know that I'm expecting him to be, you know, this year's Herb Jones or something like that, but maybe there's a possibility certainly of that happening. And it would be nice. Worst case scenario, you're building on, you know, you're giving him opportunities and it's something that he can build on. And maybe next year is the year he makes a leap and becomes a guy that can actually be, um, you know, a playoff rotation player again. We'll see. I'm not going to close the door on that this year either, but um, I'm okay with Marjan getting a run or sorry, Andre getting run over Marjan. I think obviously some people are going to say, well, you know, Pat Connaughton made one out of eight shots tonight. What's going on with that? I was shocked. Pat's Pat's shooting 35% from three, which kind of surprised me. Like I feel like he's been, it was lower. Yeah. I felt like it was was lower. Um, But again, like I'm not, I mean, I, I think Pat has proven what he can do. I, I'm, I still want to play Pat. Most nights when he's healthy, um, I think the interesting. I think one of the things I've thought about, which I'm really curious, what happens in the playoffs. You know, we talk about the Bucks' lack of point of attack, lack of guard defense. I mean, Cameron Payne is obviously not part of, part of the yeah. solution there. Um, and I mean, let's keep in mind. I mean, they didn't have a backup point guard until like, you know, right before training camp, right? I think I think they got Cam right like on the eve of training camp, more or less. Um, so it's sort of an interesting question. It's like if the playoffs started tomorrow, would they would they just not play campaign at all? You know, like he plays every night at this point, played 13 minutes tonight. Um, he's made a lot of threes, uh, but I don't know if I feel that strongly about campaign needing to play, <laughs> needing to play otherwise. <laughs> so um, it, it is an interesting question. And I think Andre plays into that a little bit because again, he's not a point guard, but he can handle it a little bit. He can be a pressure release valve. He's a good connector. So certainly to the extent that you always have, you know, in the playoffs, hopefully usually two of, of Giannis, Chris and Damon at the same time. Um, and then you have, you know, again, a guy like Andre who can handle it a little bit if, you know, someone else, you know, Dame's getting face guard or something like that. So, um, so I don't know. It's I'm, I'm curious to kind of see what happens with that. And again, if they were ready to start the season without, campaign or another you know backup point guard they must have had some view of how they were going to handle that uh so i do kind of wonder if that's something that you know maybe we see at some point during the regular season or um is that something we've seen in the playoffs because you know look as much as i enjoy jeff teague as a podcaster um and shout out to him <laughs> for making some shots in that uh uh that hawks east finals. yeah the the closing out the hawks in the east finals um i'm also kind of a little bit wary of you know relying on campaign to be a guy that has to, you know, carry us in some non day minutes uh, uh, during the playoffs. You're not alone in that at all, <laughs> but uh, yeah, shout out to Andre teams really do let him shoot. He's going to have to prove to the NBA that, Hey, I'm a valid shooter. Don't leave me out here wide open. They don't respect it at all. They don't close out hard. They just kind of look at him and be like, Oh, okay, go ahead and get that one up. Uh, but he did knock down the no hesitation three from the wing. We saw him knocking some down outside the corner. And as you already mentioned, he's, it seems like he's always team. guarded when he hits his threes too. Right. right. Like, I give, um, I give, you know, Griff credit. Like I think all good, good coaches like encourage guys to shoot. Like, I, you know, I don't know. Some people like try to kind of have it both ways. And it's like when guys miss shots, they're like, Oh, bench that guy. It's like, well, how do you get guys confident, you know, to take shots and get through slumps and things like that. It's not by, you know, pulling them the second that they miss two shots in a row or take a bad shot. So I like that the coaching staff is encouraging them to shoot. It's still an ugly looking shot, but it's going yeah. in. And I, I am a little curious when the scouting report kind of comes. I mean, Changes. he plays more. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. of course, they're going to leave him more open. And then, you know, again, is it almost like he needs a guy close? Because it feels like he has to kind of take more of a rhythm, get the shot up. If he's wide open, is he going to overthink it? I don't know. Um, but, uh, the ball's going in, so that's, that's something to celebrate. So shout out to, to Andre for, 
Absolutely. making shots in the NBA. It's absolutely. He, he didn't really do it in college. So, so. so we didn't expect it. <laughs> so we've been pleasantly surprised here, but uh, that'll do it for us here today. As mentioned, the Bucks next matchup happens to be on Thursday against Orlando magic. That'll be the last game of the six game homestand that the Bucks are currently on. And ironically enough, the Bucks have actually won their last 14 games at home at Pfizer Forum, And it's their longest home winning streak since they had 20 straight back in the 90s. They had a 20 straight victory um, at the, the BC uh, from April 19th, 1990 to uh, January 8th, 1991. So looking to continue this winning streak, see if we can get that up. So that uh, I wasn't, I was I, I wasn't even a Bucks fan back then, Camille. That's how long ago that was. Like, how I didn't long ago? A, I, I was, don't think I, I think it was '92. I went to my first Bucks game, so that is uh, that's a long ass time ago. Yeah, I was pretty new to the world uh, <laughs> in 1990. <laughs> but we're gonna get out of here. Make sure that you go and check out Locked On Sports today on YouTube and subscribe to that first ever national sports 24 seven streaming channel. Locked On Sports today comes through with 24-7 coverage of all the top sports stories of the day with all the local experts of Locked On. So make sure you go and check that out after you wrap up here today with us. So for Frank and myself, we're going to catch you later.